Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are here on Project Fuku and I have a selection of things that I brought with me and something that uh, Slobodan Stankovic had in his toolbox uh, to look for radiations that we may or may not see from the experiments that we intend to conduct. And uh, I'm just going to run through these. So uh, this is just a shot in the dark. This is a 384 kilohertz microphone. Uh, just to see if we have any different frequencies of sound coming out. Um, this is a 1980s clock radio and it has uh, AM uh, radio which we can tune between stations to listen for the cracks and pops of exotic vacuum objects or the, um, as I view it now, the coherent matter where the electrons are coming from their coherent state, uh, these fluidized electrons, into uh, the normal electron universe and this causes a columbic explosion and this produces an EMP and so you get this little pop uh, that's how I view it at the moment and so that will be listening for that down here we have a package with some CR39 detectors in that and uh, this will uh, maybe we shall use that we have some uh, self-developing x-rays here the x-rays in this little area here and this is the uh, developer fluid here and then we have a spectrometer up here now um, actually uh, Slobodan has some very good ocean optics with colimiters and um, calibration tools so uh, his device is uh, um, kind of like a much more industry standard and a uh, higher specification than this however uh, we may be able to compare this very affordable uh, device with his devices so that we have an understanding of what uh, one uh, capability the capability of one compared to this cheaper device um, because this means that more people can do experiments in a simpler way and so we may look at that and this is a RF uh, meter electrostatic meter so it looks at frequency uh, magnetic fields and, and so forth so we can may maybe use that and this is our Russian made alpha beta gamma detector so that is a selection of materials uh, or the detection uh, equipment that we have um, but we also have uh, other things which Slobodan will go into when we do a quick review uh, around his lab. Um, now, once we've created some samples, um, we should have some ways to look at them. And we've got uh, optical microscopes with us. We have uh, some MagnaView here. Um, and we have uh, the selection of uh, optical microscopes. And um, then other samples that we, we need to look at in more detail we will be able to put into some sample vials and we have a selection of sample vials here and uh, we learn actually from work in the NOVA experiment that if we used paper or paper was involved when collecting or processing samples you ended up contaminating it with paper fibers but more importantly calcium uh, that is often used, uh, or chalk even, that's used to make the papers white and smooth and free-flowing in your laser printer or whatever. And so we absolutely have to avoid using that. So we we'll, we have these sample containers which are plastic, and that is made of carbon and hydrogen that doesn't ordinarily dissociate. And so uh, we hope that, you know, if we're looking for things like calcium and potassium, that is not going to contaminate those. So that is that, and so thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.